Should the Ravens sign in Dominican Sue? That is the first question to start us off on this episode. A question from subs, and it came from my guy, BB. Let's get straight into it. He said, should the Ravens sign in Dominican Sue? Since Ravens are making a serious push uh, to put key players on both sides of the ball, maybe they should consider signing him. Your thoughts? Hashtag team keep it clean. Hashtag Super Bowl bound. And we would just have to hope that the if they did sign him, uh, his Super Bowl run, it wouldn't end like it did for the last Super Bowl team he played for, that being the Philadelphia Eagles. But can Adamakin Sue help the Ravens get to the promised land? That would be nice. I wouldn't mind if they signed Adamakin Sue. I feel like the expectations uh, wouldn't be crazy high. Can he start? Yeah. Should he start? Maybe, but you don't necessarily need him to start. Uh, he can be a fill-in type of guy. Uh, he can be a backup. He can be sort of a role player. And see, with the Dominican Sue, what the Ravens could do, uh, the way that you could structure a contract for him, because he said, it's, it's been known already, hey, I don't want to play in training camp. I don't feel like doing no training camp. I don't feel like going through all of that. Hey, he's been playing for a long time. A long time, but he's somebody that can you can put on the interior, you can put him at defensive tackle, you can put him at DN, you can move him around, and then uh, then with the loss of Calais Campbell, that's a loss that um, it's a big loss. It, it it is a big loss, but it's still important that the Ravens they they start to get the most out of their young guys on that defensive line. You got a Travis Jones, you got a Justin Matabike, you got a Broderick Washington. Those guys are going to have to step it up on another level. So if you add an Adamican suit to that, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. The more the merry. And then, again, what we've been talking about all offseason, the quality of the depth would improve that much more. Is he still the Adamican suit of old? No. We shouldn't even expect him to be. But if you look like last year, he only got one sack. But last year, he was just a role player for the Philadelphia Eagles. If we look in prior years to that, when he was with Tampa, he got in 2021, he got six sacks. In 2020, he got six sacks. Uh, so, but then in 2019, uh, he just got two and a half. Um, so I guess it just t it takes him some time to get acclimated. Maybe that's what it is. But anyway, um, I, I wouldn't expect him to get like nine, ten sacks, anything like that. I think a respectable number. And it's not just about sacks. It's about pressure. It's about run stopping. It's about a lot of stuff. But I think as far as sacks, helping with that, uh, the pressure, the interior pressure, I think a solid number would be like three or four, but especially if he's a role player and especially if he's on the team at the beginning of the season. But see, then, well, something else you got to think about, he said he don't want to be in training camp. He don't feel like going through the whole offseason and all that. He's a veteran veteran. So then it's like, all right, how acclimated will he be with the playbook? See, so there, there's that. There's something to think about. Um, so should they sign a Dominican too? They could. And it wouldn't be bad. Will they? You never know. You never know. Because apparently there are some teams that are interested in him. We'll see how interested those teams are. Will one of them be the Baltimore Ravens again, especially with the departure of Calais Campbell? Possibly. Maybe. They could be. There's some other options out there as well uh, as far as defensive linemen. But regardless of who they sign, if they bring in somebody or they don't, the, it's, it's so important for the young guys to get it this year. It, it, it is super, super, super important. Now, having a veteran there would be nice, too. Just having that fallback option and that rotational piece so guys can stay fresh. But it is so important for the young guys to take it up another level this year. Another question that also came from my guy, BB. He said, what is your opinion on Ravens retiring the number 52, the number 20, and the number 98, giving these Hall of Fame players their full respect? Now, the number 98 is not retired because that's Travis Jones' number, I believe. So that's not going to be retired. And then it, before that, it was Brandon Williams' number. I know you, you're referring to Tony Saragusa. But I, I don't, they've already given the number out several times. Um, now, I know with the situation with him, I know things are different now, but I don't think they're going to retire his number. And Ravens don't officially retire numbers. Um, they just don't give them out anymore. But they've given out 98 uh, a few times already, so I don't think that's going to stop. But as far as number 20 and number 52, they're not giving those out at all. Uh, he said, it may not be a big deal to some, but seeing someone else wearing those numbers wouldn't seem right. This franchise doesn't have any retired numbers. Your thoughts? Okay, so we, we, we answered that one already. And then next, he said, uh, is there any information on Tylen Wallace? Will Ravens involve him or will this be another pick? Ravens have wasted. Uh, Ravens still need another big time wide receiver just in case Odell has issues just staying healthy. Uh, Tylen Wallace, it's, it's a wait and see type of thing. 
Uh, he was a what fourth round pick a couple years ago. Uh, last year he felt he, I mean, he dealt with injuries and um, just never really got in the mix at wide receiver. This year I really wouldn't expect him to really get in the mix at wide receiver. You have Odell Beckham Jr., you have Rashad Bateman, you have Zay Flowers, you have Devin Duvernay. Uh, and then and those are your top five wide receivers. So you got, I mean, excuse me, top four. You have those guys alone. So, yeah, Bateman, Beckham, Aguilar, Flowers, Duvernay. There we go. So so you can't expect him to like, oh, man, Tyler Wilder's going to get so involved. No, you already got those guys ahead of him. And then even before you get into even the, the fourth, maybe even the fourth or fifth wide receiver, you got Mark Andrews, your first tight end. Then you got Isaiah Lagley. You expect him to get sprinkled in there a little bit too, but yeah, Mark Andrews. So that's going to take a lot out too. Then you still got the running game. So you got J.K. Dobbins, you got Gus Edwards. So all those people will get touches and more touches, more considerable touches than a Tyler Wallace would. So I wouldn't expect him to really get involved this year uh, at wide receiver. Um, and, I mean, the way that uh, – we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But I think more so for him it'll be a special teams type of thing. Uh, as far as Ravens still need another big-time wide receiver, just in case Odell has issues staying healthy. Ravens it, – it, we hope he can stay healthy. We know he's had health issues, obviously. Um, Ravens invested a lot in Odell Beckham Jr. They are, are risking a lot. 15 mil guaranteed. Guaranteed. Uh, so they 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 pushing all their chips in on Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, and Rashad Bateman too. Uh, they drafted Zay Flowers as well. Uh, so we're gonna see, we're gonna see. But they do have depth. But you you hope that the depth can be that just depth. You hope that the depth doesn't have to move up uh, the the totem pole as far as the lineup. Um, but yeah, Ravens making a big risk here. But I'm glad they drafted Zay Flowers too, because I I, I felt like with Odell Beckham Jr. It was cool, but it shouldn't it shouldn't and couldn't be enough. Um, so they signed Nelson Aguilar, signed uh, Odell Beckham Jr., drafted Zay Flowers, Bateman coming back, still got Duvin. They didn't trade him away. So, yeah, we're going to see as far as their wide receivers. And he said, also, with Ravens uh, re-signed Juice Man, are there any other reliable corners that could fill the position uh, in his possible absence? Well, we'll see. Rocky Scene is the guy who they got. Uh, and after that, a lot of question marks at the cornerback position. whole lot of question marks. More, more question marks than answers right now at uh at the cornerback position so we'll see what happens there um but he also said if ravens do in fact move on from marcus peters do they already have someone on their roster that can make a day one impact or are they making a move in free agency well they had uh this now this last one he sent before they resigned rocky sin but he also asked should ravens trade pq to help solidify their secondary your thoughts um, you, you could trade PQ for a corner, but at this point, no. Um, I think actually keeping Patrick Queen helps solidify the secondary because he is an excellent blitzer, so he can get pressure on them quarterbacks, whether it's sacks, pressure, disrupt their timing on their passes, and then that helps the secondary, makes it easier for interceptions. And you know just what I mean. You too, T, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Well, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Team, keep it clean. It feels really good to be back doing questions from subs. What that is is a series where you can ask any question you want to and we answer in a video like this. Uh, if you want to be part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, you can send your questions directly on Patreon. Um, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. That's it. Simple as that. Shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, Shatara. Uh, shout out to PLZRD. Uh, and Daryl. So I uh, appreciate all of y'all becoming Team Keep It Clean patrons and people who have continued uh, to be Team Keep It Clean patrons. Now, for everybody else, uh, you can send your question uh, via email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. That's it. Don't send it anywhere else. If you send it anywhere else, I ain't going to see it. Send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And be patient, please, because as y'all know, this offseason has been crazy. The Ravens always got something going on, so we can't always do the questions right away. And we can't always always do all the questions that are sent to the email. For the, for the patrons, every pa patron's questions get answered all the time, every single time. But we can't always do all the questions that get sent to the email, so please keep that in mind because, as y'all know, stuff is always crazy. But anyway, 
Let's get into a question from a patron, my guy King Corn, who's been a patron for three and a half months. I appreciate you. He said, haven't wrote you in a minute, but there's been so much good news. We got Lamar and we got some new weapons. Man, I just have a question or two. If the Ravens came out in more four receiver sets, how would you feel about it? Having Bateman and Odell both on the outside and then Duvin Flowers on the inside and also having J.K. and Lamar in the backfield. My gosh, man, that's something. No defense is going to be able to handle my humble opinion. Those 6,000 yards would definitely be a possibility. I might be hyping myself up a bit too much man but what sets would you want to see us in this season yeah oh yeah four four receiver sets would be great I, I think that would be amazing because you would put all those weapons that you got on the field and you have Odell on the outside you have Bateman on the outside you have Zay Flowers on the inside then you have Mark Andrews or you have Nelson Aguilar or you have Devin DuVernay or like you the thing about having quality options especially at the wide receiver position it gives you it gives you more possibilities. It, it, it expands everything. It, it, it makes everything that much harder for defenses to cover. It, it gives you more chances, more options, more targets. It, it just it makes Lamar's job easy. It makes the other receivers' jobs easy. It makes everybody's job on your team easier because it's is when 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 there's so many good people that are good at their job, that makes your job even easier because they can be relied on too. That opens up things for you. So that would be a beautiful thing. Uh, and then he talked about how having Lamar and J.K. Uh, in the backfield. Um, so I, the only thing I didn't like about that, that, that kind of made it sound like Lamar running back. I know he's a quarterback. He's back there. I, I, well, when you said having J.K. and Lamar in the backfield. But anyway, I know you ain't mean that. But anyway. Um, but yeah. And then having J.K. there, whether they hand it off to him or they dump it off to him on a little check down or whatever. But then, it's like with Lamar, you got all these options. You got all these people to throw to. And the defense could be consumed with that. And if Lamar said, you know what? Let me take off real quick. Bye. Get out of here. You're gone. So, now, about the 6,000 yards. <laughs> Whew. Mm. I don't know about that part. But um, this offense, the possibilities are just the endless. It really is. Um, it could there could be some growing pains because it's a new offense now. It's a new offense, so it could take some time. I don't think it should take too much time though, but it could take some time. But I just expect a big turnaround, especially uh, in the passing game. Question came from K. Rich, who been a patron for about four and a half months. He said, "Engraving, glad to see you back in your element and doing well." Got a scenario. I wanted your thoughts on the Titans are shopping Malik Willis. Uh oh, I like I don't like where this is going. But anyway, he said the Titans are shopping Malik Willis. At first, I didn't think anything of it, but then I got to thinking, if we could trade Willis for maybe a fifth-round pick, we could then, in turn, trade Huntley for a second or third-round pick. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me, let, me, let me stop you right there. Tyler Huntley, this is this, this already impossible. Tyler Huntley wouldn't go for a second or third-round pick. That, and that's nothing against him, but Tyler Huntley was a restricted free agent. The Ravens placed a low-round tender on him, meaning that any team could sign him away from the Ravens. Any single team in the NFL could sign him away from the Ravens and they would not have to give the Ravens any draft pick whatsoever. And they could have signed Tyler Huntley. Nobody did it. So he's definitely not going for a, a second or third round pick. But let's continue. He said, uh, so we would be turning a fifth round pick into a day two pick all while adding a cheaper, younger backup for Lamar. Huntley will be an unrestricted free agent after the season and Willis will be making about a meal for the next three years. Probably not reality, but it makes sense in my opinion. What are your thoughts? As always, much love. Appreciate that, K. Rich. But yeah, this is something that is it's literally impossible uh, for it to happen because yeah, no, no, nobody bit on the Tyler Huntley as a restricted free agent. So they definitely wouldn't trade a second or third round for him now. This question came from my guy, Cody, who was a patron for about two years. He said, yo, Engraven, it's been a hot minute since I've done one of these, but I've been a supporter of your channel for a while, and I love what you do. So I'm going to give you a break from all these super technical questions real quick. What's really on my mind is how much of my soul am I going to have to sign over to draft Lamar in fantasy? Ooh, I don't know about all that part. But anyway, he said, let's be real, man. We are looking mean. He said in an interview something about throwing 6,000 yards with this offense, and I'm trying to get all those points. Yeah, I, I do think, um, I ain't no fantasy expert, but if it was me, if it was me, and I had my options of who I'm taking first, it would be Lamar number one overall. This question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He says, so a lot has happened since I last checked in. OBJ signing Lamar to draft, but most recently as of May 7th was the signing of Rocky Singh. I saw on your video at Lamar's restaurant that if we got a proper corner, you would say we would get 15 wins. I'm sure you were, you were exaggerating a little, but does Rocky Singh do that for you or do we need more? 
Side note, I graduated from high school in about a year, and if the Ravens, you could give me a Super Bowl as a graduation gift, that would be greatly appreciated. Ravens, do that. Make that happen. That'd be such a, a, a great graduation gift for, for my guy Oreo Cookie. Like, yeah, why not? But anyway, um, yeah, I did, I did say that. Um, does Rocky Scene do it for me? I don't know. I don't know. So uh, I would say... Because I feel like the secondary is still just missing a little something. Maybe one more corner, maybe. But if the pass rush can be good, that's a big if, too. Pass, pass rush and secondary are big question marks, in my opinion. Um, but I, I would still say with health. Health is the biggest thing for me. With health, I think these Ravens, I, I, I think a, a low would be like, I think a low, low would be 12 and 5. A low would be 13 and 4. A high would be like 15 and 2. But more so like 14 and 3. So that's why I see them. I see, uh, so uh, the bottom low for me would be 12 and 5. The highest high uh, would be 15 and 2. This question came from my guy Greg from B More. He said, What's up? I saw the Lamar Jackson interview. That was awesome. I appreciate that. Uh, your thoughts on why they do this to Lamar and not to Jalen Hurts? I haven't heard at all about what, what Jalen Hurts needs to do to make the contract worth it. Paying all this money, however, I've heard a lot of what Lamar Jackson needs to do to make the contract worth it. That if he doesn't win a Super Bowl, it's a bad contract. The contract numbers are close and they single out Lamar because they always need to find ways to put a narrative on Lamar Jackson. I truly believe most of the media was hoping Jackson would leave Baltimore because the theory on some of Lamar's hate is they wish he could be elsewhere because the media didn't like to talk about the Ravens much before Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson had made them all talk about the Ravens more uh, because he's a star. Uh, I feel like if Lamar Jackson was in L.A., New York, any other team, most of the narratives and creating new narratives constantly would stop. Uh, oh, no. Uh, I think they would be, especially New York. Like, think about New York, especially the Jets. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it would go crazy there. It would go crazy there. But anyway, uh, excited for the upcoming season. I want to go to sleep and wake up in September already. Wishing you, the fam and community, the best from Greg and B. More. Appreciate that. Um, with with Jalen Hurts, people aren't saying that because he just came off of a Super Bowl. Uh, they lost, but he just came off of making the Super Bowl, and it was a big change, a big turnaround for the Eagles, and a big turnaround for him. But, see, the thing is that where that turnaround came from, it didn't just come out of nowhere. Um, it came from the Eagles really, really, truly investing uh, around him. And that's something that the Ravens hadn't really done. They hadn't really done it in the best way. They'd done it with, like, first-round receivers, but they hadn't done it with the veteran receivers as well. And it makes a difference when you do both. It makes a huge difference when you do both. And when the Eagles did both, Jalen Hurts took off. So now the Ravens have finally done both. They should have done both a long time ago. Quality a long time ago. Not just done both technically, but done it with high quality as well. But they didn't. But we're here now. But um, now is Lamar's turn. <laughs> Shout out to Graven B. 